Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah, nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nastaghfiruh. Wa na'udzu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyiati a'malina. May yahdihillahu fala mudilla lahu wa may yudlil fala hadiya lahu. Asyhadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la syarika lahu wa asyhadu anna Muhammadan 'abduhu wa rasuluhu. Ausikum wa iyyaya qawla min taqwallahu wa qasada wa taqul. Asalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Oh, praise to Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala as the creator of all things, the sender of all prophets and messengers and the revealer of all truth. May the blessing and mercy of Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala be upon all of us. Amen. And may Allah Subhanahu wa strengthen our iman, increase our sabr and our patience. And may Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of us from the great trial. Amen. To all the sisters and brothers that's again our class with the morning invocation, the morning dua. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alamin. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama sallaita ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim innaka hamidun majid Allahumma bika asbahna wa bika amsayna wa bika nahya wa bika namur wa ilayka nushur bismillah al-lazi la yadur Ma ayat ma ayat dulu masmihi syaitun fil ardi wa la fis samai wa huwa as-samiyyul alim raditu billahi rabba wa bil islami dina wa bi muhammadin nabiyya allahumma zidni Ilman nafia, koriskan, halalan tayiba, mubarakan fi, wa'amalan, sadihan, matakabbala. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana, wa fi al-akhirati hasana, wa qina azab al-nar wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in alhamdulillahi wa ala alamin alhamdulillah with the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we are able to continue with our Wednesday class and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our mind and our heart to understand the power of our qadr and qadr. It means the power of believing in what Allah has obtained upon all of us. With a believer, we know that we are not supposed to believe anything about the unseen without any evidence. We believe anything that is unseen only with evidence. Not hearsay, how I feel, what the majority say, but because Allah said so, and what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in his Sunnah. That's what belief is. It's just like we don't believe in the sixth article of faith if Allah and the Prophet never say about the sixth article of faith. Why we believe in Allah? Why do we believe in the angel? Why do we believe in all the Holy Scripture? Why do we believe in all the Prophets? Why do we believe that there's a day of judgment? Why do we believe in what is being predestined upon Allah upon us? Because Allah and the Prophet say so. We don't see Allah. We don't see paradise yet. We don't see hell fire yet. We don't see a lot of things that Allah have mentioned, the Prophet mentioned in the Quran and the Sunnah about the bridge, about the scale, about the delights that Allah has prepared for those who go to paradise the burning fire, flame, everything that Allah was talking about, the Prophet had mentioned it. It's about the unseen. 
But why do we believe in so many things that we don't see? Because Allah sees everything and He said that this thing exists. There are many things that we don't believe because we don't see. We thought that seeing is believing. Seeing is believing is just very, very basic. But believing without seeing is more yeah, more rational. So many things we believe without seeing. Yeah, we believe. But inshallah, by understanding the Qadda and Qadda will strengthen our belief, prepare us for the worst. Now the beauty of believing in Qadda and Qadda in predestination of what is ordained by Allah is to prepare us to face what kind of trial that you're going to be tested by Allah. Nothing can happen to us without the will of Allah. This is what Allah has informed us. Nothing will happen without the will of Allah. Allah the All-Powerful, He decides what He wants to do. Sometimes we plan this thing, but Allah let it happen in other ways because He is a master planner. But we should try our best to do what we must do. We cannot just leave it 100% of God because we do not know what is being ordained by Allah. None of us can say, I know. Where I'm heading now. You can say, I want to go to this area, but I do not know. Whether I will reach there in time, whether I reach there safely, or whether I have the chance to be there. You can plan. There are people who plan to do this, plan to do that. Something happened to them, all the plan go away. But as a believer, we are not going to blame anybody. We say, Allah knows best. Leave it back. Now, now let's go back. Into the book, believing in Qada and Qana. And according to my reference today, we should be in page 90. Before we uh, go to page 90, go back to page 89, one of the hadiths that the Prophet has reminded us. Page 89. about what he has said to Ibn Abbas. Yeah. What he has said to Ibn Abbas. Ibn Abbas is his cousin. Is his cousin yeah. yeah, Gunam, oh boy, I will teach you some important words. Inni mu'allimuka kalimat. Ehfazullah yahfazka. He said, be mindful of Allah and Allah will protect you. Now, it is a duty for all parents to remind the children when they are leaving us, when they are traveling, when they are going to school, or whatever they want to do outside from the house. Because at home, we are there to give them all the protection they need. We know what to do, what to, how to help them in case of emergency. But when they are outside, we do not know what is going to happen to them. So it is an important thing for parents, for people who love somebody for the sake of God, to always remind each other to be mindful to Allah. Meaning, you must remember Allah wherever you are. Don't forget it. The time for prayer, don't forget to perform a prayer. You can be very busy, you may have a lot of activities out, out there, but the time for the prayer, don't forget. Why is so important? Because Allah has said, but for me and for whoever remember me, I will remember him. Parents always remember their children. Even how old they are, as long as they are children, we still remember them. We still worry about have they eaten, have they had enough food, have they had money, that is bad. But children, when they are out on the home, they have to remember them. Only when they have problem, then they will start to call the family. Yeah, mom, yeah, dad, you know, I'm stuck here, I'm stuck there. That is because we are too involved yeah, with the environment, with the friend. When parents also have that same kind of experience before, once upon a time, we were like that too. Our parents always, when you leave home, they are always worried whether they will see you again. Whether they will see you one piece, yeah, okay. we don't know. Maybe that's the last time we can see you. 
the next thing you heard is a, a ring, a ring come in. Uh, say you're sorry. You say, are you the mother of your parent? It's God. Anything can happen. Yeah, because outside home, you don't feel there is a lot of security and protection. But at least at home, there's a lot of uh, reminder. Yeah. And that's why it's very important to remind people about Allah. Because when they are outside, the only one who really can protect our children is only Allah. Now, nobody can really protect except Allah. I've been traveling around the globe. I can, I can feel. It. If you don't have the experience, it's very hard for you to say. Things can happen just beside you, but you are protected. Alhamdulillah, because you remember Allah. Allah remember. That's why the Prophet said, "Be mindful of Allah, and Allah will protect you." Because you are, when you are mindful to Allah, meaning you remember what you have to say to Allah. When you're traveling, you ask Allah to protect you from all the danger that's going to come from the front, from behind, from the right, from the left. And also from the top and the bottom. That's why it says, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Masmihin shaykhun til ardi wa lafissam. There is the dua. When you're traveling, you say, Oh Allah, protect me from anything that's going to be forming from the sky and also what is going to come up from the earth. Every we ask Allah for maximum protection. And secondly, when you reach your destination, what do we say? You only remember when you travel. When you travel, sometimes you don't seem to remember. Aouz bi kalimatillahi al tamman min sharri makhan. Aouz bi kalimatillahi al tamman min sharri makhan. That means you are. Asking Allah to protect you. You take ref refuge in Allah from what is that? Yeah, with the with the name, the perfect name of Allah, the all knowing, the all seeing, the all hearing, to protect you from anything that He has created that is not true. Who created the bad thing? Allah. Who created the Satan? Allah. Who created the haram animal? Allah. Good and bad all is Allah's creation. So we ask Allah to protect you from all that is bad. That's all. Don't ask Allah to protect you from all that is good. You want all the good one, you want all the good friends to be with you, all the good provision to come to you, not the bad one. Yeah. Be mindful of Allah, you will find Him in front of you. That's why Allah comes in. Now, when you remember him, he is there. Because you can't see him, but he is always there. When Allah loves somebody, what he has to do? He uses the two letters, Kap and Nun, Kun, Fayakun, B and B. He will command the angels. That's what he will do. He command the angel. The first angel that he command is Angel Gabriel. With the chief of all the angels, he said, I love so and so because so and so loves me, I love him, and I want you to protect him. Then immediately the angel will summon all the other angels in the earth, the heavens, say, Allah and angel give me love so and so, love them. Then all the angels is around. There's a lot of angels around us, they will protect us. Anything bad is going to come close to us. The angel will signal us, give you some sign. Because you are so close to Allah, you can feel there's some signal is coming in. But if you are so busy with dunya, you don't think of Allah until when you get in trouble. Oh God, where are you? And this is how you remember God. If you have no problem, you don't even call Him. An example. Be mindful to Allah, you find Him in front of you. Get to know Allah in prosperity and He will know you in adversity. If you are, when you are good time, you always remember Allah. Allah will remember you more. It's like, you know, when you are, when you always remember your parent, your parent will love you and remember you more than how you remember your parent. You must check with your parent. Even you are grown up to them, you are still a baby. Because they are so growing. Both sides are growing. 
So always children is a baby to us. That's what the Prophet Sultan remind all of us to do. Yeah? Now know that whatever miss you could never befell you, have befell you, and whatever befell you would never have missed you. And know the victory comes with patience, sabha, relief comes with affliction, and ease comes with hardship. Now you are at ease, you must prepare for hardship. Islam always want you to prepare because Islam believes in prevention better than cure. Everything you prepare, you tell you remember the history of Yusuf. You know? They prepared seven for the seven uh, years to come, seven bad years. Because he remember Allah. He always call upon Allah and Allah guide him. Even Allah in the past, he had the Middle East with seven years drop, but Allah he had informed the Yusuf to inform the people to prepare for the seven bad years. And that is the only country they don't suffer. And that is the only time the children of Israel migrated from Palestine to Egypt. Because there is no water. Everybody is suffering. So the only place that is yeah, it's still considered green is in Egypt. And that's where Pharaoh was there. And that's how all the children of Israel start to migrate to Egypt. And later on, Moses was sent back to this world, to this part of the world, to bring back the children of Israel to the land, to Palestine. And that's why the history of Egypt, Palestine, and all this, they have a long, long history. How suddenly the Israel went to that part of the country when they were in Palestine? It's because of the drought, the test of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even, see what happened, even Allah is going to send seven years of drought. But because Yusuf remember him, call upon Allah, Allah get him. Because of one person, the whole nation of Egypt was saved. Is how important for somebody to remember about that. That's why the Prophet is said, as long as one human still call upon Allah, still a mindful to Allah on this planet Earth, then those days will not happen. Meaning, yeah, the day of Qiyam yeah, will not take. Can there be a time where nobody remember Allah? Yes. The time come. Whoever still remember Allah, Allah will command the angel of Israel to make the first blow where all the freedom from paradise will come up. And the believers, whoever still believe in Allah, will have their last breath. They're so happy to see wow, the smell of paradise. Fragrant is more uh, fragrant than the figure of mercy, than a drop of day. Good ending. And in fact, people will die. They have a good ending, they always die with a face smiling, happy. And then, like all these hardcore people who say, I don't believe in God, I don't care, I don't believe He exists. Those Troublemaker, the hardcore people. And there is a time the second door will come in. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will pick up this earth, lift it up with all mountains up, and the sky will split into two. Whatever is there is going to fall, and whatever is going to crash. And then Allah, with His power, will have to roll this planet. He's going to roll the planet like rolling a cover. Nothing can survive. The American theory, 2012, yeah, is the last day of the world. But you know, it, it didn't happen. This is just a story. But they come up with this idea because they know that one day there will be a doom day. Then, after Allah, he will. 
uh, unroll it. When they unroll this is when the day of assembly will come in. And his soul will be respected and will be judged by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now come back to page 90, our voluntary action. We have seen in the Maskot above Hadith that prior to our birth, an angel records our voluntary action in this life. To many people, this appears contradictory. They argue if our deeds are voluntary, they cannot be predestined. And if they are predestined, they cannot be voluntary. People yeah. argue. We clarify this in the rest of this chapter and discuss it again in subsequent chapters. Abu Aswat al Diari, Rahimullah, one of the Tabi. You remember why we said Rahimullah? Because he is not the Prophet's companion. Whoever is not under the companion of the Prophet, they don't have the title of Rahimullah, but they will be given another title, Rahimullah. Yeah. Okay? They are Tabi'in. Tabi'in are the people who met the companions of the Prophet but don't live in the Prophet's time. That's why you call Tabi'in. Then you have after Tabi'in is Tabi'in. Tabi and then the people who met this group of people, the Tabi'in, they don't even have the chance to see any of the companions, Sahaba. And Sahaba, whoever met Sahaba, they call Tabi'in. Whoever don't have the chance to meet the Sahaba, only the Tabi'i, they call Tabi'i, Tabi'i, Tabi'i. Tabi'i means the one who come after them. Yeah. It's like when Abu Bakr become the sixth, first Caliph, when Abu Bakr become the first Caliph, so people say to Abu Bakr, Ya Caliph of Allah. People say to Abu Bakr, Ya Caliph of Allah. Oh, the Khalifa of Allah, the Abu Bakr said, Don't call me Khalifa of Allah because the Prophet is Khalifa of Allah. I am Khalifa of Rasul. Because the word Khalifa came from the book of Khalifa. Khalifa means after. After the Prophet is Abu Bakr. So Khalifa means after. So I am here after uh, well, Prophet Muhammad. So, so. so I am the Khalifa of the Prophet. Reported that he met the Sahabi Imran bin Hussein, radiallahu anhu, who asked him, "Have people's action and striving already been ordained in the preceding qada, or are they decreed as they happen?" Following their prophet's warning, in order to establish the evidence against them, Abu Aswad replied, "Rather, it is something that has already been ordained for them." Imran asked him. Would this not then be injustice? On hearing this, Abu al Aswad was terrified and said, All things are Allah's creation and are owned by Him alone. So He may not be questioned about what He does, but they will be questioned. You see, sometimes we're talking about the unseen, the, the absolute power, is something if you can't understand, you just cannot. Yeah, have any kind of uh, what you say to the feeling towards this kind of word, but you cannot, as a believer, go beyond your limit. Your limit is that you cannot ask Allah. That is not your gift. When you believe that Allah is the creator, the most powerful, then you know that He can do anything He likes. Don't go further than that. You can ask what are you doing, you don't ask Allah. What is Allah doing now? And that's why Abu Hanifa, one of the great scholars, who is a tabi'in, because Abu Hanifa met few of the companions of the Prophet. Yeah. Which they call Hanafi school of thought. Yeah. <coughs> one day when he was a young one, when he was young, he was a very learned. Not like our children. You know, our children and yeah, they are very playful with all the PlayStation again, they only know to press all the buttons. You know? 
But she, people before her, from very young, they had memorized the Quran. They, have, they even have written books because they are guided by their parents, by the environment of scholars. They don't waste their time playing like the children today. So after they have written the book, the book has been yeah, distributed among few area, and he was moving to another district, and there was an old man teaching the student in the mosque, referring to his book. So he was trying to, yeah, to, to listen whether he is telling them the truth or not. So when he can't hear it, he went in. He walked into that and sit down. So this guy looked at him and then said, no student, so carry on teaching. Then he makes some mistake. The teacher makes a mistake. He misquote his say. So he said, uh, teacher, I think you maybe you, you forget something. So he said, who are you to tell me? You're a young guy, who are you to tell me? Then he said, because I'm the one who wrote the book. <laughs> you go back to line so and so, and then page and so, it's written that this is the same. But you didn't go there. He opened and he saw. He said, I don't think you are the wrong. You are young, boy. how can you say that? This is written by the great scholar. If you are really the real Abu Hanifa, he is a very learned man. You tell me, what is Allah doing now? Tell me what is Allah doing now? So all the others know, look at him. Who is this young guy? The troublemaker come and correct our teacher and then say our teacher is not telling the whole story. Then he, people of wisdom, people of wisdom. Sometimes it's not written in his book. So he said, uh, can you help me with one thing? For me to give you the answer, I need some help. And can you just move down from your place and come to where I'm sitting here? So he went down. Then when he was coming down, he stood up and he went to his place. And so he called him, can you sit down now? And then he also sit on his place. Then he said, do you know what is Allah doing now? Allah is putting me up here and he is putting me down there. This is the work of Allah. Now people of understanding will start, oh yeah, if, if Allah doesn't make it happen, it won't happen. How can a teacher will come down to the place of a student and let the student go and sit on his place? It won't happen. But because Allah wanted to happen, it happened. This is what Allah is doing. And He quote an ayah. Allah raised among you the people of knowledge to a higher level than a normal person. <laughs> very tough. Because you ask a very tough question. This is how it goes. If anybody asks us, I don't think we, we, we do not we, we don't have the wisdom. It's like the second thing that happened in Abu Hanifa time. The leader, the Amir in one day before Fajr prayer, he was so upset with his wife. He said, I think I've shared with you this story. I repeat it to understand. He said to his wife, I'm going to divorce you if you're still in my territory when sunset comes in. When sunset comes in, if you're still living in my territory, you are divorced. That means he mentioned a divorce with condition. The condition, you still sleep in my territory. That time, the territory of Amir al-Mu'minin, it takes at least with the fastest horse ride, three days to leave the territory. Oh. It's huge. You don't have fast train and aeroplane at that time. Fastest in the hall. In the three days, we will leave that temple. After Fajr prayer, the Amir and the Muslim leader regret what he has said to the wife. 
and he did not want this to happen. So he summoned all the scholars that he knew. Call his minister, go and look all the scholars and come into my path. I want them to help me to solve this problem. So all the scholars gathered and listened to his complaint and said, I said this to my wife and now I want to retract back. I do not want to divorce her. Because divorce is something that Allah hates most. It is allowed, but something Allah hates most. So what happened? All the scholars came. After listening to the story of Amir Muni, he said, what can we do? We cannot give an answer. We only can give you an answer when sunset comes. <laughs> because your word yeah, is tied up with their condition. So we cannot say anything until it happens. It does not happen yet. Because you cannot say you divorce your wife yet, your wife is still your wife until sunset. <laughs> Oh, this way, because how can you retract when you have put a condition? Uh, this is how the scholar feel we cannot do anything because you put a condition. Uh, if you don't say sunset, then we may know how to help you. You have put a time. And that's why we cannot say anything, no judgment yeah, now until sunset. No case. No case. Yeah. <laughs> Because you are not divorced yet. No, but it's too late. No. You are not divorced yet. Your divorce only takes place after sunset. So you ask me, there's no divorce. How do we try that? You are still your, she's still your wife. But his word he said, is there any way out? See, the way out is wait until sunset. <laughs> he does not want this to happen. And he, he come to know about this man. Abu Hanifa, Nukman bin Thabit, who is also one of the great scholars at the time. Mm -hmm. Now all the other scholars have said, how great he is, I don't think he can solve this problem. Mm -hmm. I don't think he. We all get that, we know, we remember the Quran, all the time. we also have no way out. But in the same time, they want to see how yeah, intelligent this guy is. So they send some delegate to call him. So his answer, he said, who needs who? Do I need Amir Muhammad or Amir Muhammad need me? If Amir Muhammad need me, he must come to me. There is a scholar before. They are praying so there. When they know that Amir now need them, you come. So the minister had to go back. It's not like here, today you don't go, then they will arrest you. But mm -hmm. more, they put you behind the class, you go against the order. I said, no, I, I don't need a mirror of me. I'm nothing doing it, but if you need me, call him to come and see me. So they went back and informed Amir. Amir came. And there is a different kind of personality. Even he is the Amir, but he's, he has some humbleness. He came and invited him to the palace. And all the scholars was there waiting for him. He was waiting, he was praying, the horn, and no answer. And they say, what will be your worthy? Be patient. Until Asa, the always say, I got this. <laughs> and Amir of Muminin is a feeling. What is this man? I thought that he can solve his problem. I ran and we invite him, and now he gave me no answer. Near to Margaret, he called Amir Muminin, bring your wife into the masjid. And then pray Maghrib. And you all pray Maghrib in the Muslim. So after the pray, they know that now the other scholar can give the wording. Because now it's sunset. So now you have divorced your wife. So you just make a, a rojo reconcile again. That's all you have to do. You divorce and you reconcile. Rojo. Rojo. And it's very simple, everybody is waiting for that. But after Margaret, then he also feel that no, he had made the wrong choice to invite a one to solve the problem. This guy is just like the other scholars. So the other scholars want to say, now, now you can reconcile that because it's sunset, then Abu Hanifa said, no, 
there's no reward. Because your wife has left your territory before sunset. What do you mean by that? Territory is you can control this land, but the must it belong to Allah is a free zone. The masjid is the house of Allah where nobody has the right to interfere with something very sacred. Every masjid. Every masjid. According to the rule of Allah. That's why you see most, by right, nobody has the authority of Allah. I appoint so and uh, This person must take charge of it. You only welcome those who are faithful to Allah and also the believers and the people who believe out here and fear nobody except Allah. They have the right to be the community of the Muslim. They can be the caretaker of the Muslim. People who fear nobody more than Allah, who fear Allah most. Today, most of the community of the mosque, you don't have that kind of quality anymore. They are ex-politicians, pensioners, nowhere to go. Uh, put them in the malls and then they only come once a while and there is some uh, official kind of gathering some uh, minister coming they appear if not they, they don't even pray there so the mosque uh, is not being given to the right people to run and that's why the mosque is not functioning like the land of the prophet anymore. This is to show us everybody recite the same ayah, but the understanding is not the same. Now, understanding the ayah of Allah is a gift, is an ikmah. And now the Prophet said, Whoever Allah wants him to understand his, I mean, uh, to, to uh, whoever Allah wants him to have a good understanding of things, Allah will make him understand his thing. That means the ayah is the same ayah, but people only understand from one angle, they cannot understand more than that. Translate, even translate the ayah. The ayah Allah said, illa fad uhu. And indeed, all the masjid is a territory that belongs to Allah. And that's why a masjid, you cannot just go in anytime uh, you like when you are having a, and you can do anything you like. You go in, you must pray to Rakat before you see. Where other than the mosque, you can do anything you like. In the masjid, you cannot do business. This is not a market. It's a place of worship. It's not a market, so it's not fit for you to go in and talk about, I'm selling this, I'm selling this. For your personal, if there is a kind of donation drive, it's different. It's not for your personal. A mercy is not a place for you to go and ask the people, you know, I lost my bag somewhere, I lost my phone somewhere. If anybody know where, you know, or found a phone, please contact me. It's not a place for you to make that kind of, that kind of announcement. It's a holy area, a sacred area. But today, you don't have that kind of feeling anymore entering the mosque. Anyhow, this is just an understanding here. So all things are Allah's creation and are owned by Him alone, so He may not be questioned about what He does. But they will be questioned. We will be questioned by Allah. So when the day of judgment, don't think that we can question about that. He is the one who is going to question all of us. Imran then said, May Allah show you mercy. Indeed, I only ask to test your understanding and indeed, once two men from the tribe of Muzayna came to the Prophet وسلم, and asked him what I asked you. What did they ask to the Prophet? Ya Rasulullah, ara'ayta ma ya'amalu nas yawma yaq. Yeah? Yardahuna fihi. Have people action has tribal already been ordained in the preceding order or they are decreed as they happen. A person have yeah, two guys came to the Prophet and asked him. So the Prophet answered, rather it is something that has already been ordained for them. This is confirmed in Allah's book. And I swear by the soul and he who proportioned it and inspired it is 
wickedness and his righteousness successful is he who purified it and lost is he who instilled it with corruption. And that is where the ayah came in. Meaning success is for those who keep themselves pure. In their intention, their mind, everything is very pure. They don't stray. They just follow what Allah want them to say, what Allah want them to do. They are very sincere with Allah. Because they have acknowledged that Allah, the all-knowing, the creator, the all-seeing, all-powerful. Yeah, so they just leave it wrong. If this is what Allah said, I shall make now what? Talk, I am here and I will hear. Yeah, now you are talking to somebody who is so great. You know that his expertise of this, that you go there and ask uh, uh, number one, the world number one, cook, chef. Whatever you say, I, whatever you say, I think you just have to look. Listen. Because he is the one known to the world. So you have to listen to him. It's a, it's a blessing yeah, that you can get the opportunity to meet number one. And Allah knows everything. You just have to have faith in him. So the Prophet said, I swear by the soul and he who proportioned, proportioned it and inspired it, his witness and his righteousness. Successful is he who purifies, and lost is he who instills it with corruption. That means Allah has, subhanahu wa ta'ala has reminded us we can keep ourselves pure and we can allow ourselves to be corrupted. In whatever we do, we can still keep ourselves pure if our intention is purely for Allah. Or we have a hidden agenda, in doing anything, then you have allowed your soul to be corrupted. And when your soul is corrupted, you can easily feel it. All the bad things, negative coming back to you. You feel unrest. You don't trust a person anymore. But you must ask Allah for guidance. How do you keep yourself pure? By referring to the pure guidance of Islam the Qur'an and the Sunnah. Because the Qur'an and Sunnah don't favor anybody and he's not here to please your feeling, my feeling, no. He's here to guide you so that we all praise Allah alone. This is how you can keep yourself pure. Don't allow any impurity knowledge to come into you. That's why we ask Allah in the beginning of our club, Allahumma zinni ilman, Increase in the knowledge that bring benefit. Knowledge can also cause a lot of problem. There are people who seek knowledge not to purify themselves. Just for the sake of knowledge, they're going to argue with other people. And they get hot. Nah. They, they, get, they get a lot of pressure again later on. They argue, they get tension here and there. Because they are not there to purify themselves. Purify yourself meaning every single knowledge that you learn, you try to understand and act upon it. If you are not sure, you read really come from back to the scholar, is this understanding, understanding of mind correct or not? And this is how the companion used to do to the Prophet. When the Prophet says something, they are not sure, they come back to him and say, this is my understanding of what you just said. To give you an example, when Muhammad Nasr al-Bani referred to the hadith of the Prophet about moving your finger when you are praying, it's a sunnah to move your finger, the index finger. So, then some of his students start to move in this way. And some do it this way. As far as they move. Some may do this way. So, Albani was caught by surprise, no? He was teaching his student. He thought that his student understand. And his student is an Arab, and he speaks Arab to them. So he asked them, can you uh, help me? I saw you when you were making your tashaw. When you make your, you raise your finger and when you move your finger, you move in this way. Rafa Rafa And can you 
uh, tell me what preference do you have? He said, Sheikh, we learn from you. You are the one who taught us to move our finger. Yes, but I didn't say move this way. <laughs> I said, according to how the Prophet will straight up his index finger and then he will move. Moving meaning move, shoot. You have read the word. Not like this, but he move. Straight and like he move. He did not just sit straight without moving, but he came up. You see, the, the, the word can be the same, but the understanding may differ from one to another. Then they start to go, oh, I thought that what you mean is like, I didn't say that. Neither I do that. Is that now, why, why the companion of the Prophet understand things very clearly from the Prophet? Because when they ask the Prophet and the Prophet explain, and if they still are not clear, they look at the practice of the Prophet. Uh, then they know, oh, this is what the Prophet means. Example, the Prophet said, Lakinu mautakum la ilaha illallah. This hadith is being used by a lot of Muslims in this country and they apply it wrongly. What is the, the thing that they apply wrongly? The Prophet said, Lakinu mautakum, the word mauta. Mauta, the majority of us say that people who die. People who are hey, then you say mouth, mati. But look at the action of the prophet. Did he or any of the companion wait until a person die? Then only they teach them, say, La ilaha illallah. No. The meaning of this hadith is the prophet. When you visit anybody who is going to die, suffering. Sakaratul Mau, then remind them of La ilaha illallah. Because the word Tarqin means teach. How can you teach a dead person? It's too late. You only can teach the people who are still alive. And that's what the Prophet means by Lakino Tarqin. The word Malay is Tarqin. Teach those who are going to die, La ilaha illallah. Talqin. Talqin. Teach the people the people that. After, after they're buried. There's nothing. There's nothing on them. It's not bad, but we are doing that now. You see, the hadith is there. But you misinterpret the whole issue of that. Look, if this is what we understand, then the Prophet must have shown us that it should be the way that after you bury the, 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 the deceased, then you sit down and you make Talqin. No. No more talking at that time. It's gone. If that talking is allowed, then we can go to the grave of the Chinese people who die and say, Oh, my brother, oh, my sister, oh, my friend, say, Da, da, you know, Lord. You know you can't do that. <laughs> you cannot teach the day. It's gone. This is to show us the important to have the right understanding here. Yeah? It's like the Sufis, you know, the Sufis, they read one ayah. They say, Allah said, Fa'bud rabbaka hatta yakti yakil yakin. Worship your Lord. Worship your Lord. Fa'bud rabbaka means worship your Lord. Hatta until, hatta yakti yakil, I think, the yakin come to you. So the play with yakin means until certainty you yakin. Then after yakin you don't have to worship. And that's why you have Sufis people. After they are so involved in the prayer, they say, now my yakin is so strong, I don't need to worship that normal people worshiping. We are still worshiping Allah, bowing, prostrating. Why? Because we don't have yakin. But the word yakin is been mentioned in the Quran and the Prophet has explained to us yakin is something that nobody can deny. It's certain that every living soul will die. Yakin it until you die. This is an area, a subject nobody can deny about death. Everybody is going to die. So they say, worship Allah until you die. 
But they say no, until Yaqeen come to you and then you have a question. It's like the Prophet said, and yet Allah said, Say, O Muhammad, to the people who ever loved Allah, they must call you to in kuntum tohibun Allah. But that the only you could be commanded, Allah will love you. So some crazy people will teach some man, if you like that woman, so you just stand nearby to her and blow and recite this ayah and blow it. So maybe when this ayah came to her, she will fall in love. Because the ayah said, say to them, if they love Allah, follow me. So he said, if you love Allah, follow me. Come, come to me. And you are crazy people, you sing verses in the Quran. For many many things that is very understood. And this ayah that I just mentioned, I was taught by my old friend. Also. <laughs> now my old friend said he's a he's a guy who play with this kind of like magic. You know? See, you do this time and then you blow. And then suddenly, <laughs> then suddenly you can see the woman is restless now. You know? look like ah, uh, he's working, he's working on her now. Start the work. They play with the misuse the word of the lost hand. There are many lessons in this hadith and ayah, among which are the following. One, it is permissible to discuss issues of qadr for the purpose of teaching or learning, but not the purpose of testing doubts on our belief or on our loss. Just discuss with it, but don't come to the area that to the extent now you have doubts. And that's why the Prophet is either Zukir al Qadr, When the Qadr is being discussed too intensively, to the extent that people suddenly have doubt, stop. Don't discuss it. Because you are entering a zone that is so difficult for normal people to understand. It always plays at the mind you know, of the people, and the Satan also play around this issue. Number two, everything pertaining to us as has already been decreed by Allah, our actions and deeds are all part of Qadr that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the preserved slate before He created the heavens and the earth. Allah number three is the creator of our souls and faculties. Number four, Allah enables us to differentiate between the weakness and righteousness. Number five, we have the choice of purifying ourselves to attain success or of corrupting and winning them. So it's up to us. Allah give us I show you two ways. But I say follow my way and don't follow other ways. But I'm going to show you this is good, this is bad. Halal, haram. This is the my way, Surah Muslim, Surah Shaitan. He guides us. So you don't say that you are not being warned. You cannot say I'm not being informed. I'm not being yeah, warned by anybody. All the prophet was said also for the same reason to remind people, be mindful, be mindful about the do and don't. So you cannot say I don't know nobody informed. You cannot do it. Yeah. Yesterday we were watching one talk you talking about food. We come up with a special kind of chocolate from the bread. So tasty, Mashallah, from, from US. Then they come up with a, the latest product. The chocolate was mixed with this cream, mixed with that, and mixed with pork. It's a pork chocolate. It's a, it's a new product. It was a surprise for us, but uh, we thought, oh, so nice chocolate, you know, dark chocolates. So then they, they, they came up the last, the new, this, 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 this is the latest. They mix with pork. I hope I have to recall, I never asked my wife again, she, she, she was aware about that. Why did you Sometimes you do not know, as a lay person, but I think this product they put. Uh, 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 slice of pork meat, 
on the tower, the, the, the volume, this is a big pop. And that maybe I put some haram ingredients. So that's why when you go to overseas to buy chocolate, you cannot think that the chocolate in overseas is the same like in Malaysia. If the product is in Malaysia, because we have some ruling over here, when anything go public for the public consume, uh, consumer, then you must make sure that it is halal. That's why you have halal logo. But overseas, the same brand, but it may not have the same type of so, be more careful when you buy the overseas. Brothers and sisters, I think inshallah. Now, our sins, our sins which are part of our voluntary action are decreed by Allah as well. For example, Abu Huraira reported that Allah's messenger said, A son of Adam, the meaning of the saying of the Prophet, a son of Adam's share of zina has been predestined for him, and he will in Admittedly, I think it, the eye commit zina by looking, the ear commit zina by listening, the tongue commit zina by speaking, the mouth commit zina by kissing, the hand commit zina by zina by acting or touching, the foot commit zina by walking toward the sea, the soul of heart which has desired the sin and the private part confirm come from this or rejected. This is what the Prophet is trying to tell us that. We are exposed to zina in a way that nobody can escape from zina. The zina is not just you know, the relationship between man and woman, you know, that is not halal, but it also involves the eye. When you look at things, you look from a different desire. You can look at the beauty of Allah's creation and praise. SubhanAllah, MashaAllah, it's good for your heart. If this creation is almost so beautiful, Allah will be more beautiful than this creation. Something that makes you closer to Allah is good. But not look at a person with a very corrupted heart. Try to imagine, try to have the feeling, yeah, a very yeah, unhealthy feeling. The zina of the ear is you like to listen to think that this please Allah. People gossip, people backbiting, people slandering. This is the word that you like to entertain. This is the zina of the ear. The tongue commits zina by speaking. So you speak about a thing that is not good about other people is zina, gossiping, backbiting, slandering, lying. And all these are in the form of word that you commit to the tongue. Any sin that you commit to the tongue is considered as zina pedisa. The same goes to the hand that you zina by touching something that is haram. Stealing, this is haram. Taking things that don't belong to you. Or touching the non mahram or you may hold, you don't drink at all, but you may carry a bottle of liquor. That is hard. Unless you want to throw it away, then okay. You just want to deliver it and pass it to somebody. I, I can't drink it. I pass it to my friend. It's hard. It's hard for you to pass it because you are not supposed to get involved in that. Yeah? You got to stay away. The same thing, the food that always bring you to place that is dead. That means you are exposing your, your, yourself to a lot of zina. Bring you to the karaoke, bring you to the clubs, not the club like the bars and so on, the nightclub, where you know a lot of bad things is happening there. Which one that brought you there, your leg? So all these are proceeding to the zina environment. And at the end of the day, the private part will respond. Either you reject it or you will commit the sin. So this is something that we must try to save that ourselves and keep our soul clean by staying away from all kind of sin. From the hadith we learn that zina or adultery is of different level. The worst level is the ultimate action of the private parts because, because this involves the third party now, yeah, the second part. 
The nasal levels are committed by other body parts, such as the eye and the ear. Furthermore, these nasal forms in are channels that lead to the major scene of zina. Number two, all forms of zina that a person will ever commit have already been decreed and recorded in his register, and he will surely commit them as decreed. Now, this second uh, understanding is also very important to understand. If you see it is always decreed, then yeah. we have no more choice. Yeah. yeah. So why do you blame me? Yeah. Is it been decreed that I'm going to do it? Yeah. yeah. Now you must remember, my sister. We do not know what is being decreed. Allah is telling you, He has all the knowledge. But you don't. You just have to do what you know. Stay away. You just stay away. But sometimes you be tested. So we are tested. If you remember Allah and you always try your best. To find a way to make it haram. You are tested to do something haram. To do something haram. Do it haram. Example, you are tested, somebody loves you so much, he just cannot sleep without you. Example. Mm -hmm. You always dream about you, what are you going to do? Do you love her? Do you really love her? Then get that. That's how you all come. Yeah? From, from haram, actually, it can be haram. Make it halal and then you carry on with the relationship. There's nothing wrong to make it halal something. The thing is that you entertain the halal thing. But who knows what is going to happen to us? Nobody knows except Allah. Allah is telling us you cannot hide from him. You can hide from many people you cannot hide from. But you cannot just leave this matter and then, since Allah has decreed, how do you know that Allah has decreed? How do you know that Allah has decreed that you do You do not know, so you cannot say, I think I'm not decreed to this, so mm -hmm. don't blame me, you know. Because we learn about Qadda and Qadda. I mean, most people would say that. Yeah. So we know that everything has been decreed. Yes. But we cannot take that yeah, as uh, yeah, <laughs> a lesson or that as a license for us to do what you want to do. Okay, okay. But that's where the choice of purifying ourselves from yep. the success yes. or corrupting Correct. Yeah, yes. comes right. You have to, that's why Allah had warned us. He said that this is way to go to him. Keep yourself pure. Here you may allow yourself to be part. So the strange thing, the ironic thing is that when it comes to worldly thing, we know what to choose. When we want to choose, we know what to choose. When we do not want to choose, we start to nail our mind, it's not my fault. But when we come to one thing, we know, no, 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 no. I, I do it, I want this kind of thing. If you don't do it properly, I reject I do accept. You know how to choose. When you buy something and feel that something that's not wrong, you go back and change, you know what to do. When you come to something that you want to do, is you know it's a gay Islam, you are trying to excuse yourself. No, it's the creep. <coughs> wait, wait, huh? let, let me go back to the third one. Other sins for the same principle, they have all been predestined for every person and he will be surely committed them as predestined. Allah is telling us if what is the record that is going to happen, going to happen. nobody can say no. But none of us know that what is going to happen. So did Allah say, okay, what is going to happen will happen. So do whatever you want to do. He didn't say that. He said, do this, don't do this. But what Allah is also telling us, if you do what is haram and you end up by doing what is haram, you die with it, then the qadr is anything that is wrong, the punishment will be accordingly. You have a bad ending. Don't expect that you plan uh, uh, yeah, what you get a banana seed here mm -hmm. and then you expect a durian fruit in the no. Whatever you plan here, that's what you get over there. But Allah has warned us. We know that Allah has warned us a lot, but we still, sometimes because of our weaknesses, we commit the sin. And that's where the door of repentance is always open. When you commit a sin, 
the minor sin, Allah will forgive you through your prayer, through you saying astaghfirullah. But the major sin, you must repent. And may Allah forgive all, all our sins. And now you open for Q and A. What if we have a Okay. 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 And then, even that after that, Allah said to us, "Fasalu ahli zikri in kuntum la ta'amu." Mean you must refer to the people who are specialized in that field. You know, you cannot just depend on certain thing. Maybe it apply it good for this body, it's not good for another person. So sometimes we generalize a lot of things. Why do Allah ask us to say, "Fasalu ahli zikri"? Ask people who are specialized in that field. After you have tried, then you can go. If there's no result, then you got to go to the specialist. Ask the person who are qualified on that field, who will make further research. What is the cause of the, the, the pain of the child? Or maybe he has some kind of, of, of sickness, so that they will give you the right medication. That's what the Prophet said. That's why Islam is very practical. Allah, the Prophet said, Inna Allah nazda wa dawa. Whenever Allah send down a disease, He also prepared a remedy. Fatadawul seek the medication. Ola tadawul haram, just stay away from haram. That's all. Yeah, the general understanding habu sauda can help, but how long we do not know. Yeah, the effect it may differ from body to body. So we try our best, and then there's no result. Then we have to send it. To the people who are specialized in that area, it's like somebody got cut. Some say, "Put honey," so people put honey. Some come, come with, "Eh, I say, put coffee, put coffee," in there. <laughs> and then coffee be there. Somebody may say, "Put another thing," you keep on putting, and then the thing is getting worse and worse. <laughs> because being human, you want to be cured immediately if possible. And they may say, "Go and take aloe vera, aloe vera," it will fix again. Or you go to get all this. Uh, only Allah knows. There's so many medication around. Yeah? You can try it for the emergency. You can do what you can. Later on, it's good if you worry that it may cause more injury. Go to the specialist. Then they will look at it carefully with all the honey and the coffee. <laughs> and they get they got shocked. The doctors, what is going on? Why there's so many stuff on it now? You should make it clean and then put some clean medication because we are traditional people, you know. So we put a lot of good thing there. So honey plus coffee, you know, a lot of just an example. So we have tried, but if, the, if what you have tried didn't work, meaning maybe this medication, yeah, is not yeah, responding very well. Something it worked for another person, it won't work for other. So you must be practical. Don't just depend on what people say. The prophet did say how to solve that. It's a cure for everything. But you must remember when you say cure, how to solve that? The prophet is mostly being used for them to eat. To eat, they eat. How to solve that? They put honey for for food. It's not just for you to apply here and there. It's more on food. The black seed and the color of the soda. Okay. Next question from the sisters. No. Um, someone asked me yesterday, I, I think maybe you have been asked that I can't remember. In the Quran, why sometimes Allah refers to himself as we? Yes. Because for the non Muslims, they say it's the only one God, then yes. why is he? Yeah, if that's what we say, Allah the Almighty, He can use any term He wants. And sometimes the kindness and love of Allah is so great to other of His creation, especially the angels. So when He says something, He also represents His angels. 
It's like a king, you know, sometimes. A good king, he don't say, I, I, we. Yeah. We, the Englishman. Also, it depends how you address that matter. That do not bring you down. It make, it make you feel greater. A, a great person, when he use what he always use, we, he don't want to be too selfish. Because Allah has his very faithful servant who always obey his command and he loved them when he loved them it's like when you talk about our family why we say our family you are talking your Lord because you love the family so you always have to present like if I say that our Jama I can say send my son up my my all my 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 all my it's okay it's still okay but it's not good you can say our salam to you our family salam to you it look bad. It look. We are more caring. We are more loving. It's Allah's way of expressing Himself to the people. That He is very loving, very caring. And he loves all of us. That's why He always reminds us what to do and what we are not supposed to do. Now. Any questions from the sisters? No. Okay. You're going to ask and ask them. Okay. Yeah, I'll get to read to you. Um, okay. This hadith that says uh, we, there are two things that we cannot joke about. So we joke about them. It's serious. It's just serious. So it can happen. Like that. It can happen. So uh, that two things is marriage and divorce. Yes. So that's a study. Yes. Um, so it's, we were discussing this that because some of my friends are like, oh, um, like my son is great that I will marry him to your daughter. But they are still young kids. So is that permissible? Uh, no, this is okay because this is just our discussion, a very open kind of discussion. The thing that the Prophet said that they don't want you to play the word is that you are giving hope. You are talking to an adult. I want to marry you, but you are, you don't have the intention to marry her. So suddenly when you see this now, the other party is having hope now. And then you are not sincere in the word. Don't know why you can say this. Now she is stuck now. Or maybe a woman said to the guy that, no, I, I want to marry you. Are you able, can you accept me as your wife? And then uh, now he make this, this, this guy, you know, restless. Now. He may be planning towards that, but you don't really mean it. So the Prophet don't like you to play with this kind of word. That is something very sacred. Marriage, divorce also, is not a word for you to play with. Because this is your wife now. Your wife must be honored. You must honor each other. You cannot simply say, I divorce you. No, you will say divorce. You say, you are a prostitute. You know he is not a prostitute. But suddenly you say, out of anger, you are a prostitute. You cannot say that. Why you say that? Kafara to come to you cannot you cannot touch the wall, that girl, girl anymore. They are what? Until you pay a fine. For for saying for to say that you are not a prostitute. Because if you say to your wife she is a prostitute, that means each time when you sleep with her, you are committing sin. <laughs> kafara, kafara is a place that will, will 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 redeem your sin. How to redeem it? <coughs> so either you. Feed yeah, ten people, yeah, ten people, or dress ten orphans or poor people with the proper dress. Or if you have a slave, you free a slave. Or you have to fast three days. So you just confined to this word prostitute or what? what, what well, this is for the kafara. Prostitute number one. Second. You say to your wife, your bottom look like my mother's bottom. You cannot do that. Two, for the kafara. And then the kafara will fall into place. Yes. When you want to yes. come back, it's not that, oh, yes. forgive me. And what is this? You fine? must pay the fine. What is this fine from the system? Three days fasting. Three days fasting. Or you feel. Ten poor people, or you dress them, dress them up, yeah, and free a slave. 
Yeah, because I want that you don't play with sister. Yeah. Can I see your grandmother? Mother is mother. You say like mother. You see in the Quran also Allah said you cannot because why you do that? It 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 may create what the Quran is saying. A man cannot treat the wife like a mother. Why you treat the wife like a mother? If she cannot function anymore as a wife, and it's wrong for you to approach your mother yeah. in that manner. Yeah. And, uh, actually, it's, it's our some of our culture now. It's not an healthy culture. We get used to it. You is a wife is a wife. You have beautiful name. You can call her star, moon, anything. Why you call her mama, papa? There are two things that that's our tradition here now. You call mama or papa, or you call abang. The same thing. Abang is not an Islamic punya term. It's our culture. Abang. That's why when the people want to confuse people, they use the the, the Indonesian term in Malaysia. What was the Indonesian? Indonesian call husband and wife. What? Yeah. Ah, ibu. Bapa, bapa kita. That's how you confuse the people. So Islamically, you must be careful with words so that the word will create more harmony, respect. I'm, I'm who am I? I have a name. Call me with my name. Oh, you can give me a nickname that I'm happy with. Darling, honey. Uncle is uncle. Yeah, nah. If he is, he is, he is, he is an uncle figure. A figure. That's a different thing. Husband and wife. Husband and wife. Don't play with words. Words can cause a lot of misunderstandings and that. Now this apply in the Quran talk about a man saying to the woman. Now it also apply for woman saying to the man. Now, if the woman will say, "You are not my father," she may miss the father so much that he, the father passed away. Then she miss the father. Now she, she want a, a father figure at home. So each time when you call your husband like a father, to, now there will be a problem. There will come a day, you know, your husband just cannot approach you. Each time your father, your husband approach you, you shy away because you, you are starting to feel like he is a father figure. Then you you fail to function as husband and wife anymore. There's so many beauty words to use. Why are you going to use father and mother? <laughs> you have one father, one mother. You don't use or you use darling, honey, and, and, and flower, what flower? You just call it dragon food or anything. You can if they like radio red for you can. Just example. Don't use the term father. This is something very sacred. A father is a father. Mother is a mother. Elderly people like to us like a father figure. We can call uncle. You don't call father. Your father is what? Yeah, in Indonesia we call bapa. Yeah, and this is the Indonesian Indonesian we call. He address every man bapa. It may only confuse. So if you if you talk to your boyfriend, people say, "What are you talking about? I'm talking about bapa." You see, you see, you play this kind of thing is very dangerous. No, then the father, the, the, your your husband is talking to his girlfriend. Is it who you talking? I told you some ibu. Or they call kaka. You see, all this term huh, is a total fitna. A total fitna. You may do a lot of haram thing now. And people, who are you talking to? Ibu. Who are you talking? Kaka. Kaka, my sister. But you are talking to other party now. <laughs> You see, you play with it. You are not in that problem now. Why you are stuck in that problem now? Oh, ibu, ibu, semua ibu ya. Then you know what ibu is that? Yeah, yeah. When you have problem now after something, inshallah. Any question from the now? Okay. Assalamualaikum. Is it permissible for a Muslim man to propose to a not yet Muslim woman? 
Is it permissible for a Muslim man to propose to the not yet Muslim woman? Everything is a lovely condition. You can propose and then you can remind them if they agree, of course, the other party, they must become a Muslim. Yeah, you can propose no problem. But if they are serious, then they must make it proper. And the party must become a Muslim, then only you can proceed with the Islamic marriage. Yeah. Okay. The second question is uh, the sister has dreamt of her deceased grandmother and grandfather and, uh, in their death. Uh, the first time her grandmother was smiling, but her grandfather was looking worried. She said uh, she made them dua and read Quran and gave salata uh, in, in the name of her grandfather. The next time she had the dream, she found that her grandfather was smiling this time. She wants to know now, if you dream of your relative, does it give you good news of the conditions or is it just dream? Islamically, the prophets are encouraged and the children to always be righteous children either the children or the grandchildren or the niece, the nephew, those who are uh, very attached to the family, if any of the grandparents have uh, contribute to their education, guiding them, advising them to be righteous children, and then the grandparent also will benefit from the good thing that they are doing. And also the Prophet encouraged us to do all the righteous things on behalf of the name of our father, our mother, our grandparents, who, who have done a lot for us. You know. So anything you do good for them, inshallah, with the will of Allah, they will accept their share. Yeah, because it's their effort, it's their upbringing. Because sometimes parents and grandparents always want the children or grandchildren to become the best. But we do not know how they are going to behave when they grow up. We always want to give them the best, not teach them the best. But if they do good things, Automatically, the, the parent or grandparent will get the share. And if they, they dream, uh, dream can come from the whisper of the Satan and it can be also from Allah because the Prophet said, other than the Prophet, there's no more revelation except good dreams. We can have, receive good dreams. So if this dream is something that is good, remind us to do something that is good, then you can do it and not something that you must do again the sunnah of the prophet that people start to say oh maybe we now do tahlil with them kanduri awa so but now they are suffering so let us make a kanduri awa that one we don't accept you just do righteous thing you know, on behalf you don't need to be our grandfather because your grandfather is a kind man he used to do all the good work when he was alive and now you are carrying out his you know, his good uh, action so it, 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 they will get the share yes just that but don't go and involve in any bidah uh, to 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 help the parent you do any bidah uh, the parent will never get any reward from Allah because bidah uh, has no value in the side of Islam okay uh, we have one more yes just in your question just came in yeah uh, he said in one of the UHY classes uh, it was mentioned that a man can wear clothes that are not 100% silk. Can you please clarify? No, if you look at what the Prophet say about haram uh, dress for the man of my ummah is gold and silk, pure silk. Pure, pure. pure silk. Everything to talk about, the Prophet talk about haram is always go back to the pure thing. Not just that. Like Go printed and so on. Even go printed scholars do not want you to use because public do not know whether this is go printed or this is pure gold. But people don't check people. But when you look go this, they see you're very go green. So to stay away, like people you see you know, watches and then they have gold printed and so on, it's good to stay away from anything that creates super hard. Now when we come to seal, seal, even in the time of the Prophet Anas bin Malik, who is eligible with other 
textile, so he only can wear silk and the proper allowed. But he do not allow most of the men who can wear other garment to use silk, and it is considered as pure silk. Always when the prophet said, "What you mix, the whole thing have changed. Yeah. All have changed. So the whole comb will change because of that." There is a, there is a Yes, it's a continuum of that. Yeah, there's a, there, uh, there is an addition to the first question about dreams. About dream? Yes. Uh, she wants to know what does it mean if you dream of a deceased relative? If you, if you dream of the deceased person, that is Allah's will, like Allah wants to, to, to remind you of something. But if everything there is good, you must respond in the way that Allah and the Prophet are going to respond, not doing all the bid'ah thing. And so you must, uh, it's good that anybody who always have this good dream to get the good scholar to seek advice. What should they do? If not, then they will be doing the wrong thing, uh, Brothers, any, any question from the brothers? No question from the brothers, inshallah. Uh, next Wednesday, yeah, the class is still on, inshallah. I'll be back. Inshallah, the class will be on until our, uh, when they were. And I will not be around many of you know, in your So, yeah, Allah, what does it Sunday, I will, uh, the class is on by Sashari. I won't be around, I can leave it tomorrow. Yeah. Inshallah. Let us end our gathering today, Inshallah. Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah. Ashadu an la ilaha ila anta. Ashadu fiyoka. Wa adu muhli. To all the sisters and brothers, this ending du'a is very important for us. Want us to recite when we have a gathering or discussion or anything to end with this du'a, so that whatever sin that we committed while we attend the class, uh, the class, then may Allah forgive us. Ask Allah to forgive us. So try to memorize this du'a. Yes. Yeah. You. You. Subhanakumahumma. Wabihamdika. Again, uh, Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika ashadu an la ilaha illa anta ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilik astaghfiruka wa atubu ilik This is a du'a that I highly recommended by our Prophet Yes, our Prophet Yeah, 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 yeah. Shalom. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Oh, to all the sisters, sisters, uh, please stay on for a while. Uh, announcement, yeah, number one. For those sisters who are, have some free time tomorrow, 14 tomorrow, 14 at 10 30 a.m., there will be a sorting out of clothes from the cabin to prepare for jungle sale. The cabin in front here. So, any sister who has some time, you are welcome to assist yeah, the sister to organize all the boxes uh, that we have collected uh, so that we can get things organized for jungle sale tomorrow at 10.30 here yeah. just come here and then the cabin will uh, be open for some of the sisters to help them to sort out the clothing 10.30 a.m. tomorrow this, uh, who is in charge of this? Uh? Mimi? Sister Mimi? Sister Salma yeah? So, contact with Sister Sama who is coming so that they know how many people is uh, uh, participating in this, inshallah. Sister Zulaika, one of our sisters, uh, just asked us a favor to make a dua for her mom who is now in the hospital. Her mom is suffering cancer. Her uh, mom's name is Tatin Arabia Bidhi Osman. Inshallah, let us make a short prayer for her. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahirrahmanirrahim. Wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sallam.
Ya muqallibal qulub sabi qalbah ala dini wa ala ta'ati Ya ayyum qulub rahmati hastaliz Allahumma anta syafi' la syafa'atun illa syafa'u syfiha ya rahman ya rahim Allahumma yusirha wa la ta'asirha ya rahman ya rahim Ya jajalal ya ikram Ya muqallibal qulub ya ayyum qulub ya rahmati hastaliz Ya syafi' ya hafiz Ahfiz kami qulub bala fi dunia wa abu fi dunia zahir bin abadina Allahumma zidhu sabran ya rahman ya rahim اللهم زدها زدها صبرا اللهم زدها صبرا يا رحمن يا رحيم يا جل جلال الإكرام ربنا عادنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وصل الله على محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين الحمد لله رب العالمين آمين يا رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته